Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're doing a little Google discounted cash flow. Google stock analysis. How is the cash flow useful for you in investing? Well, let me tell you. A cash flow is useful so that you have some numbers in front of you so you just understand what you're looking at. When you do a cash flow and you get the results, that does not mean you rush out and buy the stock if it appears to be undervalued. I need to make that clear. There's been some confusion about this. Like, I just run my discounted cash flow and then I go buy. No, your cash flow is to just get you in the door to see if you're interested in buying a particular stock. It is a tool of elimination. The most important thing in investing, if you are to buy individual stocks, if you must, I recommend low cost index funds, specifically VOO, VTI, or VT. Any one of those, or VT Wax, however you wanna do it, um, XUS, I recommend those ETFs. They will probably end up doing better with no effort than you or I will do picking individual stocks. If you must pick individual stocks, keep it to five to 10% of your portfolio just in case it doesn't work out. Most of us don't have all the time in the world to sit around doing stock analysis all day. This is why I encourage tax advantaged accounts and low cost index funds. So let's get into Google with that disclaimer. Also, do not buy a stock solely because my discounted cash flow said it was undervalued. I'm going to explain more about this at the end and let's get into it. So what are we looking at? What we're looking at is basically a dream boat of a company to own. Now, the question becomes, is this stock for me? So let me air this disclaimer. It's been a little while since I've done cash flows. This might be a little bit janky, but I'm getting back into it. Second, um, I have no idea where I was going with that second point. So let's just continue going. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Second point, you're not going to get a whole lot of argument from me if you're buying Google at this price point. I just tend to be a more conservative investor, but again, it's how it fits your portfolio and what you're looking at. So let's just get into this. All right, so maybe later. Okay, so what are we looking at? Market cap is 1.43. I, I can change that in here. I did this last night and it was 1.47, but there was a market drop. So, or I did this a couple days ago. I don't remember. Let's put that in. That affects our numbers. And then we'll come back here. We'll just look at this. This is why I like everything money software because it's just convenient and it's pretty cheap. So let's go over here to the balance sheet. This is something that I wanted to just point out. When I say this is a dream boat of a company to own, there you go, total assets. You guys can look through the balance sheets, cash equivalents, $20 billion. Come down here, total liabilities, 103 billion. Okay, so again, if you're actually doing real analysis, there's more to go into in the balance sheet, but I'm just using this as a quick reference point. Understand that in the interest of brevity, <clears throat> I do gloss over things. Because, I mean, if you're really gonna do a stock analysis on this, <coughs> it's gonna take a lot longer. You're looking at two, three hours or more. So. I just like to quick keep it short and quick for you guys at home. Okay, we've looked at that. Um, I use their stock analyzer tool and I got an intrinsic value. <clears throat> I logged out of this so it's not up. I got an intrinsic value of 
89 to 202 dollars depending on your assumptions okay let's go look at my cash flow my cash flow is on the low end of what everything money's price point in here said and again don't buy individual stocks because you went to a <clears throat> uh, stock an intrinsic stock calculator for lack of a better term all this is is a cash flow that's it it's the same thing i do we just go about it in different ways but i just want to make that clear that <clears throat> just because a stock appears to be undervalued because you did a discounted cash flow don't go out and buy it you could do a discounted cash flow on at&t and it could tell you that it's massively undervalued because your assumptions are stupid also you're not looking at the financial statements when you do that so what you're what you're not looking at is at&t's massive debt load this is why you need to go through the financial statements so let's look at my excel doc okay so we're looking at google 1.43 trillion dollar market cap eps 5.53 cash flow 60 68 billion five year 39 billion now for google a lot of times what i do to be even more conservative is i'll take the averages of cash flows and earnings per share when i do this intrinsic calculation I didn't do that for Google because Google has such a strong moat balance sheet. <clears throat> the financial statements are great. I don't do that for this company. So it is going to be dependent, right? But th I, honestly, this is a no brainer stock. I mean, if it continues to drop and it comes on fire sale of a PE ratio, if I get a multiple of 14 or 15, I'm going straight balls deep into this stock because it's just too good to pass up. And that's always the question. The stock is great. Can I get it for the right price? Because if you overpay, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to be down at the truck stop or the biker bar. I don't know where you're going to be, but your butt is going to hurt at the end of the night. So come down here <clears throat> if we look at my assumptions here i'm using a 12 percent growth rate a little bit too conservative maybe warren buffett's first rule of investing don't lose money his second rule of investing see rule number one okay so it should generate using a multiple of 20 71 or 71.5 billion dollars generated 68 this to me is not really a discrepancy it's just going to depend on the multiples for a company like this come down here that would give us a market cap of 1.36 billion for fair value using a multiple of 20 come over here 10 20 times free cash flow you're getting a 103 dollars stock 10 times you're getting a 77 split the difference at 90 you're getting at 15 you're getting a 90 dollars stock come down here the beauty of this this is the current ratio 2.87 right in the magic zone of we have a lot of money on hand but we're also deploying it because if your current ratio gets too high it might indicate that they're having trouble deploying their capital. This is perfect. Um, <clears throat> debt to equity ratio, 0 0.06. You have to love that. <clears throat> Target price is, I'm not, price to free cash. This is a little bit off because I calculated it at a higher number. So don't worry about that. But I mean, it's right within the error range anyway. So who cares? Uh, target price that I'm getting 90.39 and I will elaborate on that a little bit on the end on my final thoughts Ben Graham number Ben Graham number is another tool I use which tells me my ideal buy point for a stock 
So it doesn't have to exactly hit my gram number, but when you're running your gram number, understand what that's calculating is if everything works out, that's about a 20% return on your money. That's why I use it. Come down here, Guru Focus has an intrinsic value of about $56. We come over here, let's look at this. High end, using a terminal multiple of 25, 202. Low end, using a terminal multiple of, this is a 10% discount rate, this is a 15, giving you a 12.5% discount rate. Low end, 68.31. And there is your intrinsic value. Were you to believe 10 years from now, Google would be selling at a 25 price to earnings ratio. You'd be safe paying $124 for a 12.5% return. I use this to show you that your terminal multiples are going to matter when you go to sell. P ratio at 21, we're getting $104 stock. Fair market value. 15. This is where you want to stick around just because the fair multiple of the uh, S&P 500 historically is 15 to 16. So that's going to give you about a 10% return or greater. That's what that's baking in. We come over here and on the low end selling for a low, low PE ratio of 11, which I should probably change that to 10 you get a $54 stock. Come over here using the free cash flow. Well, it's not really the free cash flow. What it is, is these numbers. <clears throat> this is all the cash flows added up. And then what I do is I discount that back at 12 and a half percent. And then I use a terminal multiple of three. <clears throat> Why do I do that? <clears throat> to represent inflation. That's why I use the 3% number. But if we come over here, 10, 12 and a half, and a 15% return, average, <clears throat> sorry about that, average together, we get a 93.04 uh, intrinsic value. Problem is here, right here, and this is all of these averaged together, we're getting a $90.39 stock, $90.39. Now, what I do when there's share dilution is I come over here and I use a multiple, say 0.8. If I thought Google was gonna be issuing shares at, you know, uh, for over the next 10 years at about 2% per year, that would account for my multiple of 0.8. Now I do that with um, stocks that are diluting because I wanna see the effects of dilution on my ownership in the company. I don't really do it when a company is buying back stocks. Why? Stock buybacks are not guaranteed. I don't want that factored in. Now, I might come over here for uh, poops and giggles and say, Google is gonna do the exact opposite. Buy back 1% of their shares per year, giving me more ownership. There you go, that's a $99 stock, but I don't use this in my assumptions. Come over here, and this is just gonna depend, you know, what uh, multiple I'm using. So I'm not really gonna go too far into this, but you know, there you go, $70.84 stock. All right, so <clears throat> what is my final thoughts on Google? Well, let me just share. All right, first off, for me personally, <clears throat> I want a little bit more of a margin of safety. Like I said earlier in the video, if I were to start buying Google, which is a dream company, I'm probably going for the historic selling point of the stock market. I'd probably start nibbling at a 15 price to earnings ratio, a 16, somewhere in there, and then continue to buy as it dropped. But that being said, you're not really going to get an argument out of me 
if you're starting to buy Google right now. You could do a lot worse if you must buy individual stocks and you don't want to listen to my recommendation of 90 to 95% of your money in low cost index funds. It, it, see, it's entirely situational. If I wasn't an index fund investor, I would probably be buying Google right now. I would probably be balls deep in Google because of the strong balance sheet, the strong moat. I really don't know <clears throat> what more I can say about Google. You know, it, it's it's a dream boat of a company. That's all I have to say when you're when you want to own a, a piece of a business. So what is my final thoughts? My final thoughts are put 90 to 95% of your money in low cost index funds. If you must buy individual stocks and you want to buy Google, you're not going to get an argument out of me. Also, when I'm setting my price points, these are my price points for me. You may have different price points. Where would I be backing up the truck? on Google, if it fell to a price to earnings ratio of 12 or 13, I would probably be <clears throat> kidnapping my neighbor's cat to sell it into slavery. I would be, you know, at the border, picking up migrants for that extra cash money to buy Google. So that's what my final thoughts would be. If, I mean, you're going to pick it up. If it drops, if it drops below into this area right here, I really think that I'm gonna start backing up the truck and buying as much as possible. So for my portfolio, Google is slightly more value, slightly more expensive than what I want to ideally pay. Um, will I ever get uh, Google at the price I want? Don't know. I don't care about buying individual stocks unless I'm getting it for the right price that makes sense to me. And you should be that way too. So you shouldn't listen to any, well, you should listen to other people and take their ideas in, but don't just base your idea on what somebody else says. I am not giving you financial advice. What I'm doing is giving you an insight into how my mind works on picking up individual companies Cash flow is not the end all. After this, since I am interested, the next step, which I will probably do, is to read Google's <clears throat> 10K and more familiarize myself <clears throat> with what's in store for Google in the future, the risks, and it is what it is. So, like I said, like and subscribe or don't. Don't take this as financial advice. You have to do your own research. But I would say Google is at a great starting point for you to start doing more research. We're right, we're beginning to get right into the magic area where you wanna buy. And I want you to remember the stock market's Schiller PE ratio is somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, which is expensive by about a factor of two. So I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but I'm saying, I would add this to your watch list all day long. It's almost there. I don't know, maybe you wanna go down to Google's headquarters and take a dump in their lobby and see if you can generate some controversy to get the stock to drop. That's on you, that's highly illegal. I'm not suggesting it. You do what you want to, but there it is. My thoughts on Google. Again, I'll repeat myself, like and subscribe or don't. I hope this cash flow helps you and I'm out.